someone played the lottery on Tuesday because the jackpot was a billion and a half dollars, and everyone wanted to get all that money, even nuns and little kids. Anyway, they drew the winning number, six. And oh, fuck, it wasn't just any old idiot who won, but that's right, Terre Haute Mary, the woman in Indiana who married God. Yeah, she married God because that's a thing the Catholic Church allows you to do, and the Pope considers it the most beautiful miracle of repressed sexuality produced by an institution of abuse. Anyhow, well, shoot, Terre Haute Mary collected the money all right, but get this, on the way back to her modest two-bedroom apartment, a pickup truck T-boned her at an intersection. Pow! Oh, no! When the police got there, the truck driver had fled, and the woman was dead, dead, dead. Nasty stuff. You can Google the pictures. Well, everyone got angry because they wanted that money for themselves, and all her aunts, and all her uncles, and cousins, and the principal at the fucking school she taught came out saying, Give me that fucking money, you horse shit. They took it to a judge. The judge was a smart judge, and he cared about the law, so he said, Nuh-uh, y'all, by law, all that money belonged to God now. He slammed his gavel, and everyone got impotent on greed. Yeah, green balls, <laughs> you idiot. Well, fuck, no one could fight it. So now God was a billionaire. He came to Earth again in a nice-ass rental from Enterprise and collected all that money and bought himself a big old house. All the poor people and lepers tried to visit the house, which was on Fire Island. But God put up electric fences and turret guns and hired ex-convicts and hell's angels to kill anyone who got close. One day, they snapped an old lady in half like a goddamn Kit Kat. Well, the media tore into God for that. Like, oh, uh, that's a dick move, God. We thought you were God. Give away all your money. Uh, so all the priests had to go on Fox News and tell everyone that was God's money, fair and square, and how dare you take even a penny from our billionaire God, who earned it, by the way, and everyone shut up because a priest was talking and they haven't done anything ever that would discredit them. So God lived with a billion smackers, stopped answering prayers, and fucked a bunch of dudes at parties, and no one ever found out the person driving the truck that night was God. Mr. Don't Lick rode into town triumphantly on his horse, triumphantly carrying a fish high above his head. Holy shit! Look what I caught! He screamed. Everyone ran out into the street and was like, whoa, fuck, dude, fuck, seriously, you caught that? And some people were like, you go, girl. You know you got the moves to do what you want to do. He rode past Dirty Gripping Shitter High School, named after the president who got shot, holding his salmon in the air. Kids ran to the windows to cheer for him, and some of those kids joined the military and went to Vietnam later. But that's a different story, and, uh, newsflash, we didn't win, because democracy used to mean something in this country. Okay, everyone, thanks, Mr. Don't Lick said hours later when they finally got to his house. The townspeople had been following him, cheering all the way. He said thanks, polite enough, but he was really saying, okay, fuck off, I have shit to do now. And a few of them were actually happy to hear it, because he was kind of a weird guy, and they would have felt uncomfortable if he'd invited any of them in. When a few of the tough guys got back to town after getting swept up in the parade, they went to an O'Charlie's by the mall, had a few 32-ounce bottomless light beers, and agreed they'd tune him up pretty good next time they saw him, because it's important that men do guy stuff stuff like that every now and again. Anyway, Mr. Don't Lick pulled the fish into the house by its legs and realized something looked fucked up with it. He pulled the hook out of its mouth and realized it wasn't a fish at all, but the school principal who'd gone missing a few years ago, he was mad at himself that he didn't notice sooner. The short sleeve button up red tie and name tag that said principal on it should have been a dead giveaway. Fuck, 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 he said to himself. And look, the principal hadn't drowned. Someone had really fucked him up good and then tossed him in the lake. So, if Mr. Don't Lick got caught with the body, he'd definitely go to prison. I got it, he said to himself, and he called the cops. 
In a few weeks, Mr. Don't Lick was on death row. This really worked out for everyone. I'll break it down. One, the kids didn't have a principal, which is super cool because school drools and kids hate rules. Number two, Mr. Don't Lick always wanted to go to prison. So he smiled when he got tuned up by crooked guards because there was no blood on his hands and he still got the full prison experience. I guess the only one who lost out was the principal's widow. She never really got closure or anything and started drinking a ton. But let me tell you, those kids had the best summer vacation of their lives, except for the ones who went to Vietnam later. So the mayor was at the new Spencer's gift store cutting the ribbon in the big Spencer's opening ceremony. He said, to a bright and happy tomorrow, because the people in the town needed both employment and novelty greeting cards with tits and asses on them. But get this, the moment he cut the ribbon, a lady in the audience screamed, uh-oh, and gave birth to a squirming tot. Everyone stepped away because the afterbirth splashed out, and people wore their nice shoes to a ribbon cutting ceremony well because the spencer's opening and the baby being born happened at the exact same time god decided to make them twins so yeah the baby was twins with the spencer's gift store and you could tell if you looked at them for one they were both sarcastic as fuck and two they both didn't have genitals yeah the kid neither because that's part of the twin rules and if you think the kid had it rough you didn't even step inside the spencer's yeah, the kid didn't get a pris pris, but the Spencers had to eat, and that's hard for a retail store. Every manager at the Spencers, on top of stocking novelty cards, and God, I, I honestly don't know much, it's, it's, it's been a long time since I've been to a Spencers. Well, there was a big fucking mouth in the back of the store, and they had to feed it hot fucking meat every morning and every night, otherwise the store would die. It put a big pressure on them, but that's no excuse. The kid was in school when he got a terrible seizure. He dropped his lunch tray and it was dog food day, so fucking kibble scattered everywhere and it was louder than normal food. He started screaming, no, 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 and foaming at the mouth. That's how his disparate but close group of friends knew something bad was happening to the Spencer's gift store. Twin powers! So a ragtag group of school kids, the chess champ, a girl from detention, the jock, a unanimously ridiculed overweight child, the inhaler kid, and Neville, all rode their bikes to the JFK Junior Mall. They had to break in. Two of the kids had to incapacitate a security guard by breaking his kneecaps. Ah! Ah! and taping a bag around his head. He had a daughter and she had to grow up knowing her father died in the hands of children like an idiot. Anyhow, they got in there and it turns out the managerial staff had grown toxic with their modicum of power and had taken to hiring the mouth in the store out for work. Anonymous most of them named Justin or Conrad would come into Spencer's, go to the back corner behind the register and Yuck, yuck. The store, bless it, just thought it was hot, hot meat and fucking to those trying to eat those hot, hot ham dogs. Yeah, a couple guys lost, but it was cheaper than a human and you could buy funny t-shirts like this one that says horniest granddad. So now this gang of children had to beat the shit out of a bunch of retail making love to an mall storefront and the children did the inhaler kid and neville ripped a man in half by running in opposite directions with his arms the jock and the princess fell in love when they cracked a man's skull open using a pencil holder shaped like a toilet bowl so the store ended up closing that year anyhow due to complete lack of sales and the kid died because of twin rules. They had a joint funeral and buried the retail storefront and the child in the same coffin like all twins. Everyone already knows the story of terrible Terry who wreaked havoc on the town of Y, but some dipshits forgot to write it down, so here goes. Terrible Terry was an awful mess of a boy who had no goals or ambition because he was such a little piece of shit. Everyone knew he wouldn't amount to a damn thing, and no one knew what to do with him. 
Terrible Terry, you're a waste, a goddamn waste, his guidance counselor, Ernest Aaron, shouted at him. Why would you ever think you would accomplish anything, Terrible Terry, his little sister, adorable Annabelle, taunted. Terrible Terry didn't understand why everyone thought he was so terrible, but it was a fact. He just kept on drawing models for spaceships and other stupid shit he thought was inventive, and everyone just kept yelling, Why do you even try, Terrible Terry? Don't you know you're just a fucking piece of shit? Terrible Terry eventually got fed up and decided he may as well live up to everyone's expectations and set a plan in motion that caused the horrible event we all remember with anguish and delight. He strode up to the top of Mount Oh No, overlooking the town with the flamethrower he made in his dad Gregarious Gabe's basement, and knew once and for all that this was how he'd get back at his naysayers. As he let loose the flamethrower with a loud kablam, kablooey, flames snaked down the mountain, roaring and licking through the town, and terrible Terry could hear the distant screams of chastising Kathy and born-again Brenda and pious Peter and all those assholes who said Terry was terrible. And he laughed and laughed and laughed until the sky was nothing but a brilliant orange mushroom cloud. And now we all remember that day as the day terrible Terry was finally truly fucking terrible and bow our heads in prayer when we see the sun burst through the sky like the flames at the top of Mount Oh No. There was a small dog and it was angry all the time. It barked at the mom and it barked at the baby and it barked at the dad, but it didn't bite anyone because it knew boundaries. Oh, but that doesn't mean it didn't bite. It just bit a designated toy called the whipping baby. One toy was chewed, one toy was maimed, one toy was humped, and one toy was shook. And the family laughed at the dog. You fucking dork, the mom said, and the baby said, fucking dork, like a baby idiot. Then one day, Mrs. Gribby visited with her husband. Mrs. Gribby was a foreign dignitary to the Philippines, and her husband was a scientist that was trying to cure taking shits. Mr. Gribby had a rare genetic condition that made his skin look like fleece, and he was wearing prescription sunglasses, the new kind that make your eyes look like buttons. And, due to a lung condition, when he coughed, he squeaked instead of coughed because his capillaries were all hamburger. So the dog, whose name, by the way, was Daddy's Little Grinner, could not be blamed when he thought that this wasn't a man at all, but his precious whipping baby, grown into a whipping man, but no less deserving. Oh my god! The mom screamed, and the baby, whose name was Tip Tip, said, Fucking duck! And Daddy, whose name was Mr. Hefty No-Nose, Big H No-Nose to his friends, just screamed, Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh shit! Daddy's little grinner tore out Mr. Gribby's neck and throat, and everyone saw his fucking spine under all the meat. And even though it was scary and gory, later they admitted it was kind of funny, because Daddy's little grinner was just a little dog boy. Anyway, Mr. Gribby died, probably. Our relationship with the Philippines fell to pieces. The dog got the chair. And the man's lifetime of research was for fucking nothing. And that's why we still take shits. Oh, hi! My name is Healthy, and I've been waiting to meet you. Oh, I read your name in a magazine, and I said to myself, that's who I'll kill to honor God. Well, here we are. I invited you to this remote location under promise of picnic, but open the basket. <laughs> That's right. There's no meat in those sandwiches. Look at those deviled eggs. <laughs> no tangy filling. Just empty, hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> it's a trick, Nick, and the trick is on you. Gosh, I'm so sorry to do this, but there aren't enough angels in the sky. I wrote God a letter asking for more. God, it's me, your loyal fan, and I want more angels. But God said there were all the angels he could make, and if I wanted more, I'd need to lend a hand. 
Okay, I said, hammering a nail into my baseball bat. Now, oh fuck, now it's time for my baseball bat with the nails in it. I'm gonna bash, bash, bash. Now I'll know how it felt when Isaac was tied up ready for stab death and God said to Abraham, Yo, Abe, don't kill the kid just yet. Why don't you circumcise each other? Ha <laughs> ha, have a little fun, wink wink. Good evening and welcome to the news. This is Rich Shit Heart. And I'm scared, uh, maybe. It turns out someone loved God so much and wanted God to have more friends. The news is unbiased and says good. He decided to take a baseball bat to a picnic and just globbered this fucking idiot. Pow! Smack! The guy died. We have confirmation from a man in bloody overalls named Healthy that the guy who died was happy because he understood the pact one lone man made with God and honored it. How about sports? Sports here and sad to say no sports happened since the last time we talked. Hopefully tomorrow someone will sport. Until then, I'm a cooking show, crack, crack, grill, grill. Ah, uh, well, that's enough for tonight. I'm eager to spill one on my TV screen tonight while I watch myself. I am in love, and his name is me. And we are bonded even now in sexual intercourse. Yeah, that's right. I tied my penis in a pretzel. See you next time. The commercial that came on then was for tall Applebee's because no one likes dining with small people. Disgusting! Disgusting.